Welcome to Comic Station, where we try to go over the new releases for each week. This is issue number 88 for September 3rd, 2014, and we're going to try some things a little different. This is going to be a little bit more rapid fire since there are so many new releases this week. Some of them may only be the cover, whereas we usually try to go into two or three uh, pages into it. Uh, first off, speaking of which, is Death of Wolverine number one of four. This is, of course, how many times has Wolverine died? So. If this is a Wolverine issue, it has the same feel, uh, people that love Wolverine comics will enjoy this one, and at the end of this, four, we are promised the titular death of Wolverine, however long that will last. Next up, we have The Names from Vertigo Comics. This is issue number one. It is a Wall Street death. It's a murder mystery, trying to find out there's conspiracies, different groups, uh, Really fun. I really enjoyed this. I thought this was uh, a nice, neat take. Female main character uh, gets down and dirty. Some of the artwork, artwork improved the darker the scene. Not just going by night and day dark, but also more grisly. Uh, the artwork served that a little bit better. Otherwise, really good story, interesting, and it's one to keep an eye on if you like murder mysteries. Next up is God Hates Astronauts, number one from Image Comics, and as you can probably tell from the cover, this is an acid trip waiting to happen. Crab, literally full crabs, headed people with talking tigers and astronauts that are farmers and walking bears and yeah, everything just speaks uh, acid trip waiting to happen. Uh, a lot of profanity, definitely not uh, something for the kids or even young teens. I wouldn't recommend this at all until adults, just the content in it. Uh, honestly, I think the wackiness went a little bit above what I was looking for and became ridiculous. Next up is X-Con number one from Dynamite Comics. This one has a very interesting premise and I really enjoyed this as well as my wife who read it uh, real quick as a skimming for me. And uh, basic story is this: ma the main character can read people, literally see people's not quite auras, but if you are weak, you are yellow. Uh, if you are lustful, you have red. If you are greedy, you are green. And he uses that to his advantage until one day he's caught. And now, not only has his powers seemed to have given up on him, but he is now caught in a web of different people trying to play him. He's not quite sure, especially since he doesn't have, seem to have the powers anymore. And there is some kind of conspiracy going on. And he is in the center of it. I think it's really cool. It's interesting. I like the new premise with the carrot with the colors and good art style. Uh, really fit it pretty well. And this is one to keep an eye on. This is not a one of anything, and that does worry me a little bit because something of a story like this can tend to drag on. So we'll see how many issues this is. If they keep it to a volume or two, I think this will really do well. Next up. Hawkeye vs. Deadpool. This one I just had to read because I read both of these separately. And the writer for Deadpool, Dugan, is on this. Uh, the artist is not from Hawkeye, but he does try to uh, lovingly imitate. I I imagery is, uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. And some of the art style, it, he does pull it off pretty well with a different kind of, just not quite there, but different. Not bad. And it comes off fun. It's interesting. If you've been reading the Deadpool, if you haven't been reading Deadpool, some of the things would, is going to probably throw you off. Um, Hawkeye does pick up pretty well. Uh, there's a joke that all Avengers must be rich, and that's a running thing in Hawkeye. So check it out. Fans of either one of or both of these titles will really enjoy this one, I think, so far. Uh, this is an issue number zero, and with issue number one promised in 30 days. So keep an eye on it. I think it's fun. It'll be interesting. Uh, but I'm a fan of both of these titles, as I said. Next up, we have Cloaks number one from Boom Comics. This is a one of four, and I think that is really going to benefit it because this is a tight story that I'm looking forward to. Uh, Summation is essentially a young kid running through the orphanage, uh, was at one point raised by a magician, and you see him years later. He is a street magician now, doing a little petty theft while doing 
street magician, but he does have a kind heart, as evidenced by some of the what he does with some of the money. Uh, even though he is pickpocketing, he is turning that money towards good. He has bent morals, and but it's really fun. There's some mystery. There's whether or not uh, somebody may be dead or not. It's it's, it's really fun. I think the uh, one of four is going to benefit. I'm interested to see where it's going to go on this. And Cloaks from Boom Studios, definitely an interesting magic show, sleight of hand. Uh, Mystery, it's just fun. From Dark Horse Comics, we have Concrete Park, number one of five. This one is essentially LA Gang Wars in Space. It is a desert planet. Uh, there is a colony, a city, that is basically divvied up among gang members. And right off, first thing this opens up on is there is a Penal colony ship coming in is essentially a slave ship. They have to serve two years in the mines, which most of them don't make it through the first year. And in this case, it crashed. There's a survivor. He's pulled into this. He is unaware. So he is your eyepiece into this world. And coming from L.A. in the gangbanging scene, uh, he recognizes a lot of similarities in it. And right from there. But the interesting thing is the gang member is a female. It is... Uh, it is uh, a lot of terminology and stuff, uh, slang that's used that may throw some people off, but otherwise it's a it's a fun read. It's a different look, and essentially sums it up is L.A. in space, L.A. gangs in space. From Valiant Comics, Doctor Mirage number one, uh, De the death defying Doctor Mirage. Ooh, forgive me. Uh, but essentially this comes out as a paranormal investigator who really does either see or speak to ghosts. Uh, there are not just ghosts, but paranormal. Uh, she is hired by somebody who claims to be... Let's back up. She, she has a bad past. Uh, her handler is aware of this and trying to force her to confront it. It's an interesting way to introduce her. Uh, in the end of this issue, she's hired by somebody to do a job that you're not quite sure he's on the up and up, or the job is even on the up and up. So, it's interesting. I thought this was really neat. Uh, the artwork served it well. The story uh, was well paced. Uh, and like I said, though, the first one half to three quarters of it is pretty much used as uh, an introduction to the characters and what some of her conflicts are and but I thought it did really well and it set it up pretty well. Finally for our last issue today we have from IDW Silent Hill Downpour number one and Anne's story. So those of you who like many people didn't play Silent Hill Downpour uh, you're not alone but if you were interested in the story, if you like Silent Hill stories, this is from Anne's point of view. She is the parole officer character trying to chase down the main character in Silent Hill Downpour, and this is her side of the story. So if you played the game and you were interested more in her side, or even if you didn't, but you want more Silent Hill, this is a good place to start. It's purely a story, obviously. The artwork was pretty good, the gruesome characters. Although, my wife did read this. She's a big Silent Hill fan. This Downpour is the only Silent Hill she has not played. And while she did enjoy this, the artwork was good. She should probably keep reading this. But she did say that it doesn't quite get you into the atmosphere. While the, care, while the uh, enemies are gruesome, they don't have the same atmosphere as a Silent Hill game, of course. They're not going to have the sounds. They're not going to have the creepy movement, the semi-broken human movement that just is slightly off and disturbing. And this doesn't have that. They try to do a good job with the artwork, and they seemingly do, but it just misses that. Uh, so if you like Silent Hill games, you may not like this. But if you like Silent Hill stories, this may be an additional benefit, additional content for you. 
Thank you for watching Conversation Issue number 88 for September 3rd. If you want more reviews, check out FrontTowardsGamer.com. Lido has a number of reviews up there, as well as he has new television shows up there. Uh, I do believe he actually reviewed episode number 2 of the new Doctor Who with Capaldi. So, check it out. Lots of content. More coming. And as always, every Wednesday, earlier if I can, depending on editing, we will come out with these reviews, try to go over some of these new issues. That way, when you come in on the comic book store on Wednesday, you're not rummaging and taken in by some covers that may bring you into a story you're not interested in. Please let us know if we missed anything, anything you were interested in hearing more about but we missed, anything that we did review but you have a differing opinion, please let us know. I'm always interested and looking forward to your comments. Thank you very much, and we will see you every Wednesday here on the Comic Station.